Hello, Aqua friends. My name is Nicole Cordemosh. Welcome to my channel. I have a watercolor horse tutorial for you today with some bonus footage that is in 3D. <laughs> so I made two different versions of this horse. I have been doing a lot of mixed media stuff that I'm practicing and I got this idea to do a three-dimensional horse. If I kind of hold that sideways, you can see that he is done on a separate piece of paper and kind of molded and shaped and put onto this background. The supplies that I used today, I'm gonna to go over that with you. I used neutral tint for most of the horse. So it is kind of a black and white horse, except for the bridle. So the bridle, I did use some uh, burnt sienna as an underpainting so that I got that nice warm uh, brown coming through. And I used Van Dyke Brown and Sepia. For the gold buckle, I used yellow ochre and gold. Now the photo that I'm using, the reference photo, is from a subscription I have from Inveto. And so I can't share it because I have a subscription to them. So I am allowed to use it to, to make my own stuff, but I can't distribute it. But if you find any kind of horse that's a side profile like this, you could definitely follow along with the same idea of doing a monochromatic painting, except for some details that might be in the painting. So it's kind of fun. The paper, I always use German company Hanamul collection series. They make a lot of different papers, a lot of different watercolor papers. I've tried quite a few of them. This one's the best, and it's most like this one, which is the cream of the crop as far as watercolor papers go. Now, of course, you need a pencil and you need an eraser to get your sketch onto your paper. As far as the brushes go, I used a flat brush and some round brushes, some big ones, and then I used a script liner brush. To cut out your horse, if you wanted to do the three-dimensional one, you'll need an X-Acto knife and a self-healing mat. And then I just bought these mats. I actually get them from Amazon. They come in packs of 25s with the backings and the little bags. So it makes the cutest presentation if you're giving these away as gifts. I got some adhesive foam squares, three millimeter thickness. You can use a steam iron. Any iron will work. Just put it on a steam setting. And that is just to soften the paper and I use the back of my brush in order to shape the horse. So make sure you watch the video to the end so you can see how I did the 3D horse. All right, let's get started. For the regular watercolor painting, we start with a good sketch and I'm starting off with the background. So we're just gonna wet the background carefully around the silhouette of the horse. And I'm taking my time and getting the paper really nice and wet because I want a very soft, smoky background effect. I'm adding in my neutral tint. So just keep adding the neutral tint and you can soften things out with a fan brush. And I'm just getting a very soft, smoky effect. We're gonna let that first layer dry and then we are gonna start working on the horse. I am going to do his mane and the body all in one shot, wet on wet. So we're gonna wet that area really well and starting off with my first coat of the neutral tint. We're gonna build up our values layer by layer to get a nice realistic effect. And painting in the direction the fur goes. If 
For the speckled look of his fur, I'm adding in some water droplets while the paper is still wet. This produces a really nice effect. Once the paper dries, I redid that layer a second time around. And now I'm going to work on his face in the same manner. Working wet on wet, I am wetting the areas of his face and then dropping in my neutral tint. So I'm working around the bridle, as you can see. So I'm wetting each section and doing one section at a time so that I keep the white of my paper for his bridle. Once I'm finished the first layer on his face, I'm going to let the whole thing dry and then I'm going to do the second layer just like I did for the rest of his body, working each section at a time. So notice I am going over the same areas where I have the darker hues with my second layer. Watercolors dry about 20% lighter than when you first put your paint on. So that is why we have to work in layers and develop our values slowly. Now I'm going back to his body and I'm working on the mane. I'm using a script liner brush to add in some uh, more texture and to have some definition. I do want to keep things still fairly light so in some areas I uh, wet the paper first to have some very nice wavy soft lines in his mane. So this is my third layer on the horse. I think this took me about two to three hours of painting time. And then for his forelock, it's very, very dark. So I'm using my Princeton round brush to draw in those hairs. I'm using a script liner brush to draw in all the wispy parts of his furlock. Furlock, forelock, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> So now I'm finally getting around to working on that eye with a very light mixture of the neutral tint. I am drawing in the eye, putting my first coat on the eyeball, leaving that little bit of the white of the paper. So this is my third layer that I'm working on his face. So I'm trying to soften some of that lines around his mouth and you can just wet the area to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Notice with each layer that we do, we get a more three-dimensional look. There's a lot more shading and it just has a lot more realism. Working on darkening up that eye. I'm adding in some stronger colors, a more thicker consistency of paint, and I am painting in another layer on his mane. Wetting some sections first and then coming in with a thick amount of paint. Always painting in the direction the hair goes. Now I'm starting on the bridle and I really wanted that really nice warm reddish brown color to show through so I chose a underpainting of the burnt sienna. It's going to have that really nice glow through the browns. So all the leather parts I am putting a layer of the burnt sienna on there. I'm then I'm coming in with my browns. I used some Van Dyke brown as well as some sepia to get in those darker colors. So I keep darkening up the browns on the leather, putting in the shadows and the edges of the leather straps. For the gold buckle, I used yellow ochre with some gold mixed in. Now I'm cleaning up my edges and adding in the shadows with some uh, neutral tint around the gold buckles and straps. Now I did add a little bit of some opaque white, a very thin wash of it to the gold. I found it just a little bit too yellowy and uh, wanted to dampen that down a little bit. You could still see that nice warmth through it, but it just makes it look a little bit more realistic having it dampened down a bit. So there are a lot of gray hairs in the mane and um, I'm adding in that white uh, to those areas as well. And highlighting is really pretty main. Now I wanted the stetching in his bridle to be very precise and I used a gel white pen for this so that I could get very very fine detailed lines 
and I'm just using a ruler to help me um, go along those edges that are straight. Of course, as they curve around his face, I have to kind of carefully do those ones by hand. If you wanted to be a traditionalist and stick with just watercolor, you can use a script liner brush to draw in the stitching or you could even leave the stitching out. I do love these little fine details and so I really enjoyed adding these details to his bridle. And then you can sign your painting and you're done. This was a fun project to do. Very simple palette, almost like a black and white effect except for his bridle. So it's very pretty and eye catching. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process and gives you some ideas for making your own horse. Moving on to how I did the three-dimensional horse, I painted him in the exact same way, so I'll spare you all that footage, but I didn't paint out the background, so I used a full sheet of paper but cut it in half. Half of it I did the horse and the other half is saved for the background. You do not draw in the bridle, so you don't have to worry about painting around the bridle. So that part is different, but once he's all dry and you're done painting your horse, then you're gonna cut him out with an X-Acto knife. Take your time to do this. Once I cut him out on the edges, I am painting this with the same colors that I used to fill in any of those white areas. And then I'm using my horse, taping him down and kind of using him as a stencil on my background paper. And then you're going to lightly trace where your horse is going to go. Just because for the background, we don't obviously have to paint where the horse is. And it just kind of allows us to visualize where the horse is going to be when you add your smoky background. So I'm wetting my paper and I'm doing the background in the exact same way. Once your background is dry, we can prep our horse. So to get our horse shaped and ready to apply to our background, we're gonna steam him. Watercolor paper is basically uh, cotton. If you're using good watercolor paper, it's cotton. So it could withstand some shaping. Um, even paper that is uh, cellulose in nature, if you're not using 100% cotton, could withstand uh, some manipulation because it's very thick. I used 140 pound paper for this. So once I got him steamed, he's pliable. And with the back of my brush, I'm burnishing. By that, I mean I'm pressing down really hard and manipulating the the paper so that it curves. It has a little bit of curve. You could also use your fingers and help that along and get your edges nice and curved and shaped. I also did the bridle separately. So I painted the bridle in the same way and the only difference is that I used gold ink for the buckle parts. And I'm going to meticulously cut this out. I'm taking my time to cut out the bridle. I 
I then painted the edges in the same manner that I painted the edges of the horse. Where there's gold, I painted the edges gold. Where it was the leather bridle, I painted those edges the brown color. So I have some double-sided foam squares that I added to the horse. I'm erasing my lines and then I'm going to line them up and plop them on there and now he's three-dimensional. I am going to do this same thing with my bridle. I'm just making sure that I manipulate the bridle and this I just used my fingers. I didn't steam it and I just manipulated the paper with my fingers. As you can see from this profile picture I took you could see how he pops up from the frame. Now because we used one square thickness of the double-sided foam tape for the mat, you have to use two so that it has enough room to pop up from the background. They do sell three-dimensional frames or you could buy spacers for frames so that you can um, put your matted painting into a frame and maintain that three-dimensional look. I hope you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. Let me know what you think about the two different versions and I will see you next week.